Welcome everyone to the studio. Thanks for joining us here today. It is spring in Portland. It's beautiful, but that means that yesterday it was like 78 degrees and today it's like in the, in the 50s, so I'm kind of bundled up. Um, I have a nice program planned for you today. I'm gonna talk a little bit at the beginning here about composition, because I get a lot of questions about composition. Then I'm gonna talk about what we have going on in the, on the website. And then we're gonna do a, a demo for you. So um, let's just dive right in and get started. So composition, what is that? Composition is just how are you arranging the stuff in your picture plane? And I, you can get all nerdy about composition. It's it can you can go super deep. You can talk about the golden section, the Fibonacci. Um, sequence, all of that kind of cool, cool stuff. And if you're inclined that way, I think that's super great. There's lots of information to dig into. Uh, for me, there's so much complexity in painting that I'm interested in. So I, I, I kind of go a little deep into composition, but there's so much else to, <laughs> to play with color and brushwork and all that other good stuff. So I try to keep my thoughts about composition on the simple side. So I think about, about five keys, and I know I said four, but then I thought, okay, I'm gonna add one more. Five keys to really strong compositions. The first being know, and this is really simple, it sounds simple, but it's not always so simple. Know why you are painting a thing. So identifying what grabs you in particular about a subject, what's kind of haunting you, enchanting you, and hold on to that throughout the process. So sometimes that, that can be something super simple like the way the light is dancing um, through, on, on a pathway. Oh, I'm super interested in the contour, the silhouette of these trees, or I love the the way the, the colors are happening or interacting. So it can be super simple. I want to think about what are the challenges presented to me and what are the opportunities, so both of those. So that's in why, know why you're painting the thing. Next, number two, is use an unequal distribution or division of the elements in your scene. And that, can, that goes for shapes and colors and line, so unequal division of shapes. Next, third, is see it simply. Now this is really, really crucial, and edit, 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 edit. So uh, oftentimes I get the question, well, you can't improve on nature, but you can improve on your painting. So we don't have to be married to either whether you're working from a photo or you're on site or working from a from life. We don't have to stay married to exactly what is in the visual field. We can move things around, scoochy things around, enlarge, diminish, change things to make better painting. So edit, 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 see it simply. So when I'm thinking about seeing something simply, I want to get the number of shapes, the big shapes, down to about three to five big shapes in my scene. And from there, I can go down and dig deeper into the, the detail. So number four, and I have a little slide on this, think about most, some, and a bit. So that's kind of goes to that unequal division of shapes and things and colors, so most, some, and a little bit. So like kind of like papa bear, mama bear, baby bear, whatever, whatever little cue helps you to think about it, use that. And number five, and this is really important for me, did I say it like I meant it? And that means making a commitment to whatever path I'm using um, in my painting. Okay, so those are, the, those are my five big, big um, keys, but there's lots involved there. So let's take a look at a couple things on the iPad. 
And first off is this first um, slide here. And are we there, Bryce? All right, great. Composition, value, color, edges, brushwork, et cetera, detail. So this is a little hierarchy, the way I'm thinking about organizing my um, attention to what I'm doing in uh, a painting. So you can see composition and value, they're right there. Color is going to play a secondary role, though sometimes um, you know it's the fun part, but really the value is doing most of the work. And value and composition can be very interrelated because um, the value patterns are helping to impose the composition. So let's look at this next one. So this is the, that most, some, and a bit could be uh, thinking about the division of space. It all, also could be the dominance of color line, texture, all of that within a painting. Now what else we got here? The other thing that I, I think about, particularly when, with regards to the landscape, is my painting about the earth or is it about the sky? And I'm going to make a decision about that. Again, that commitment thing. Did I say it like I meant it? So I'm going to divide my composition so that it's really clear what my emphasis is. Okay, next. So rule of thirds. So you can think about the rule of thirds anywhere on these, these, uh, these guys. Whoops, let's see, I'm gonna get on that layer and just do a little drawing. So anywhere in here, these are the rule of thirds, dividing this, the, your composition in that, that way. So if you have your focal point anywhere, sitting on any of these spots, it's a good place. Now, a couple things with that. Some people say, oh, that's overused, or, oh, you know, that's old hat. Well, yeah, but it works. <laughs> so um, it's a really, really good one. The other comment here that I'm, I'm going to talk to, uh, speak to a little bit is, do you need a focal point? And I think you don't always need a focal point for a painting to be successful. And with that, you can have secondary focal points and tertiary focal points. So you can have multiple areas of interest in a painting that lead you and orchestrate the painting. So there's that too. So now let's get into some kind of set, oops, let me get rid of that, this one. Some set um, armatures or models of composition. So something like this, like a, like a balance scale or a, the steel yard and let's, or, or the O, the little, little, little tunnel thing. That the, the, all kinds of things that you could think of with regard to that. Um, then radiating lines. A T or an X or cross. So there are lots and lots of let's let's go to um, let's go to the to the other camera, Bryce. You can come back to me. So my favorite books on composition, let me just go through these really quick, are, um, so you can get lots of information on those model, those compositional models or armatures in these books. Now, that's something I don't typically um, head to all that much, but they can be interesting to play with. And at the very least, just recognizing what you're doing in a, in a composition, I think is, is smart to do. So first off, first and foremost, foremost, Edgar Payne's Composition of Outdoor Painting. This is a fabulous book. And it um, is, I think right now, it's a little hard to get, but we'll see. I don't know, you guys can chime in on that. But if and when you can, it's a good one. Next one is Dan McCaw's uh, book, A Proven Strategy for Creating Great Art. I love this book. 
it's amazing. He's an amazing painter. He was one of my instructors at Art Center where I went to school. So great. Then Andrew Loomis, this is the creative illustration. It's got fabulous information about composition in it. And you can actually get this book for free, a free PDF version of it online. So that's that's an easy, easy do for, for this one. It's a nice, this is a great book. And now this one, this one is Greg Albert's The Sim Simple Secret to Better Painting. And he really talks about that, the one rule of composition that he, he thinks is the most important one, that unequal division of or distribution of elements in a painting. Okay, so this one is a really good one too. Okay, so that's a little teeny, teeny bit about composition. I'll be presenting at IAPS this year. I'm going to be doing two presentations, one on loosening up your landscapes and one on cracking the color code. So I hope to see some of you there at IAPS. I'm getting all set to go there, getting excited about that. And I'm also super excited about uh, our upcoming release, we're working on it, of year four, and we're going to share a few little sneak peeks with you today on what's coming up in year four. <laughs> just, it's, it's kind of, it's, I'm just kind of over the moon about it because this year, really not leaving anything <laughs> off the table. I'm really just put putting just my heart and soul into it, and we really have done that. So we're just really, really taking it up a notch in year four. So let's share a couple of the project images, the, this koi. So we're going really macro and getting in there and getting those beautiful patterns and colors and getting, this reminds me a little bit of the peppermint project we, that we did last year. The wolf. So I am bringing some of those big animals into year four, which is really, really exciting. Uh, and that's different papers, different, different techniques, just a different scale. It's uh, really, really, really fun. Then this marina. So I thought it was really important to introduce some different styles along with using different papers and a different scale. This is a pretty big painting. So we are really um, exploring this year. And then finally, this Festival of Lights image. These are these beautiful candles. So getting lots of practice in uh, different subject matter. So it's going to be really, really um, fun to be revealing. We'll be showing more of the images from year four in the upcoming weeks as we get ready to launch. We'll be launching it. Uh, we'll have the new content available on July 1st. But before that, um, we are running a little sale, not a little sale, it is, it's actually a big sale on um, monthly and yearly subscription right now. And it's for new subscribers only or people that had to cancel and want to come back. Um, you can pay either monthly and have access to three new sessions each month for a one-time annual payment, or you can get access to all 36 session, sessions right away. And this includes over 200 videos and 36 beautifully illustrated study guides. And again, on year, on, uh, on year four, uh, come out July 1st, you'll have access to 12 new sessions. Now each session has three full demonstrations and its own study guide. So you'll, you'll be getting lots uh, of looks at what's coming. But the sale is, um, it's a really good sale. Um, we have actually lowered the price and there's also a coupon for $80 off the yearly subscription or uh, two months free of the monthly. So um, that sale ends on 423, 
So, um, yeah, just get in there and check it out. It includes access to, let's see what else, the bonus nocturnes on when you sign up. And each session focuses on a topic, either a fundamental paint of painting or a subject. Uh, and um, each month, subscribers also get our super stream lesson, which is a two-hour uh, private, well, it's private, it's only for members, uh, lesson, and it includes critique. So that's um, pretty, pretty cool. And we do a long Q&A during that lesson. And you also have access to the mileage training archive, which is two years of my, mileage training, and the private Facebook group, which everyone is in there doing all the lessons together. And it's just such a wonderful community of people that are really engaged with one another over time. So it's, it's really, really cool. They're doing the same coursework together. So I'm a really firm believer in that, that mileage for learning um, painting and uh, pastel practice. And I think that the subscription is really serves that super, super well. I'm really, really proud of it. Uh, the, the subscription works like a gym membership. You have access to all of the content as long as you are a paying member to the subscription. So it's really awesome. We're really proud of it. Um, and it's year four is coming out. I can't believe it. All right. That is that. That was a mouthful. And let's see what else we're going to do. We're going to do demo today. Let me get re readjusted. So as I'm doing the demo today, this is a really, really beautiful scene. Um, it's Telluride, Colorado. Get, I'm going to move the iPad stuff out of the way. Out of the way. Okay, let's see. All right. Do you guys need to move the, you good? Okay, great. Okay. So let's take a look at this guy, just compositionally. I'm going to use pastel matte. And obviously this is a beautiful location. It's a beautiful scene. But I'm not super wild on the photo just as is. So I'm going to make some, some changes. And specifically, I, I want to uh, make it a square. So I'm going to come into it. But if I make it a square, guess what happens? If I make it a square, I miss all of this good stuff over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring some of that good stuff over in here. So I'm moving some things around to get a more dynamic composition. The other thing is, see this little area here of light? It's okay, but I feel like it's kind of small. So I'm going to let this shadow take up this entire area here. So I have this nice shadow shape that sort of framing the the piece. Now, it's not closing it off. I don't think I have enough of an avenue back in here. I do like these patterns of shadow going back in here. I like this. I also like a little bit of sky. So I'm not sure that I'm going to include all these layers. Um, of mountains. We'll see when I get there. I might open this up a little bit more. We'll see how that goes. So that's kind of my idea. Now, in terms of what, what it is that grabs me about this and is just that, that play of light going back and it's kind of mysterious. I'm, I'm I'm wanting to see what's around this bend here. I also love the color. The color's just, you know, gorgeous. I can almost, it was a beautiful day. 
as I recall, when I was there and taking these photos and just the warmth of the sun hitting the, that fall foliage is so, so pretty. So, yep. All right, I'm gonna put my hair up. And I'm gonna put right here. So I'm reminded of what I had in mind to do. Now, I think that when, whenever we're painting, it's really important to stay open to the possibilities that present themselves as a painting develops. So yes, I usually start out with some idea of where I went ahead, but at the same time, I stay open to the idea that it might, that might change, and it might change significantly, and that's okay. That doesn't mean I haven't succeeded. Usually you know when, when something is working or not. Okay, okay, all right. Okay. I wanna get this as big as I can get it. I've been working lately quite a bit bigger. So, and that's been really interesting. And so I'm gonna just come in. So my idea is that all of this is really in shadow. And then, yeah. Yeah, we're taking questions at the end, you guys. So if you wouldn't mind just putting your questions in the chat, we'll get to them at the end. Just lets me get into a little bit more of a flow, hopefully do a little bit better job on the demo for you. Just getting, getting back there. Let's see what happens up here. I don't know exactly. But that's kind of... All right. There's a... Nice little space over here for me to play with. Gotta get some color in.
Okay. Not sure about that yet, but I'm just going to leave it for now. Whenever I'm unsure about something, I try to kind of reserve judgment about it. Just try to hold tight. Because usually such things get resolved with as you as you um, are going through the process. And if you if you start getting picking on things too soon, then um, then you can really get get in trouble. So try not to try not to do that. layers going. go ahead and put something in for that distant mountain that needs to be light enough in value. I think actually this seems really light, but I think it will work. when I get up here. To the sky. Yeah. Uh, 
have to work on that a little bit now. Now I'm pushing out on the, the, the values. Oops, I want something a little. There's all these layers of trees you could kind of go nuts getting in here. But keep it, keep it simpler. Back in here. Okay, I need to get my little, my lights back here now, kind of lost. Lost my way here. Get, oops, I want some little bit, I want those rocks in the center. And I'm gonna, gonna bring in some other color. Now we're starting to get something. Right. We don't need all the rocks.
It's looking pretty neat. Let's get these guys kind of fat going in here. Do I want some other kinds of colors in here, maybe? I think I want to actually lighten up this shadow. I'm going to lighten this up, but I don't want it to be quite as intense as I've got it. I don't want this to be sit back there a little bit more. play with this a lot. This. And a little bit more contrast here. I think I got this too light overall, but it's not bad. Maybe it needs a little, maybe I need to pull in something like that. Okay, should we take some questions? So, so uh, will this be available to view later? Yeah, yeah, we'll make it, we'll make it available, yeah. And someone yeah. noticed your other pastels uh, when you were sitting at the table. Yeah. Maybe at the end we could, um, we can go, we could talk about those, we can move the camera and check yeah, them out. Yeah, sure. Um, they're just, they're just boxes of, of pastels that you haven't removed from their boxes. Right? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. Just, I'm just kind of expanding a little bit here and there from my regular set. Cool. And uh, for those people who have done the annual subscription, 
um, will they automatically be resubscribed for year four? Um, yes, yeah, it depends on if you're on auto renew or not. That That's a kind of a support question. So we um, might contact support at paintinglessonswithmarla.com for those those kinds of those kinds of questions. Cool. And so, um, did you use blue spruce for the sketch in on this one? I did, and I'm trying to wean myself off and um, get alternatives lined up. But I still, <laughs> I'm still de dependent for the time being. And here's um, here's one more, the last one for now. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you choose which color to start? Um, referring to the paper or re referring to pastel? Pastel. Okay, so I, whenever I'm painting, I'm trying to get the most going as soon as I can. So I'm going to choose the kind of dominant color that I can see, the kind of the biggest, easiest thing for me to see color-wise. And I want to get that down, and I want to get it down as a, as it. Usually, I'm trying to stay as thin as I can for as long as I can. So I'm going to get it down as a thin layer, just kind of a base. Yeah, this this is nice. It's nice and loose and and um, very direct mark making and kind of fun. And it definitely what attracted me to this scene is those layers of light and shadow, the patterns. And I think I got that, so that makes me happy. Love the reflections in the water. That makes me happy. There's all kinds of things you could you could do. I think maybe the the this could go even lighter and brighter. Maybe even like this. Um, honestly. It's here and there. nice like that okay good all right yeah so make sure you get to the website and check out our sale the sale is right now only for new subscribers or people that have canceled in the past and want want to come back but we're going to be having um, lots of previews of year uh, four coming up and lots to share with you that we're just really, really happy. And as I said, it's, I'm really committed in year four to helping people get to that next level because I want to do that in my own work and I know that um, you guys do too. Um, that's it. I think it's I think, um, fun. Fun little demo today. I hope you enjoyed watching. And oh, we want to do this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I got all my stuff here. <laughs> okay, yeah. So this is just kind of um, the extra stuff that I don't really have a, have a room in the big tray for. And a little things that are a little hard to organize. Well, and specifically the center layer here, I, these guys, it's really hard to get the wrappers off of them because they crumble. So I've kind of kept them intact here. That's the reason these guys are here. These guys, obviously, they take up a lot of room in the palette. They're really fun to work with. I love them, but they're that's the reason they're here. And new pastels, uh, I have a lot of back stock of new pastels, and um, they also kind of tend to take up a lot of space in the palette, and I don't, um, you know, they're not the dominant pastel that I'm using. And then these are Giro's, 
and um, Giro's are wonderful. They're kind of medium hard pastels. So I'm gonna, yeah, let's, let's frame this guy up. See how I did compositionally, I think pretty well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's fun. Yep. Yeah, we'll make this um, available. I'm not sure whether it'll be on daily paintworks or not. I have to spend a little more time and refine a few little things, but I, you know, I think I think we'll put it up there. Okay, you guys have a lovely weekend. We'll see you next week, I hope. And in the meantime, hope happy painting. Hope you get to be creative, get to paint, draw, all that stuff. Okay, see you guys soon.